Hello and welcome back super mums. In today's video we are going to be doing another one in our series on working mum life and we're going to be speaking to Tamsin Jefferson Harvey who started her own business after becoming a mum. Now this is my personal favourite route. I am naturally entrepreneurial entrepreneurial and I'm naturally much happier working for myself in fact I'm a bit of a nightmare as an employee so I think it's safer for the world in general for me to work for myself um, so this is a, this is the one that I'm particularly excited about so thank you very much for joining us Tamsin um, could you start thank by telling us a, <laughs> could you start by telling us a bit about yourself outside of your work life, who you are as a mum, what small people have you got running around at home, how old they are, etc. Yeah, so um, I have two small-ish children. Um, my eldest is nearly seven, that's Isaac, and then Eden is three and a half. Um, and so Isaac's at school, Eden's at nursery, and I'm also married, I sometimes forget that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm also married to my husband, Andrew. Um, and uh, that's about it really. Oh, and what did work life look for you before children? So before either of them came along, what was your sort of normal working week like? Um, before I had kids, um, to be perfectly honest, I've never really found my true calling. So I would never have said that I found the career that I always dreamed of doing for the rest of my life. But Prior to having um, Isaac, my eldest, I was working for a market research company uh, that I was actually being trained up to potentially take over in, in future years. Uh, but it was a very small business and um, uh, basically um, when, when I found out I was pregnant, um, I kind of realised that it wouldn't be fair on them to have to hold my position open for maternity leave and it, it wasn't really going to work for me working Monday to Friday um you know sort of standard nine to five hours and um wasn't going to be able to afford any sort of child care so um that's that's basically what life was like lots of going out having fun having a life and, uh, and working so yes and then, so. then we'll do a, a pause between the two kids so after your after your first small human arrived what did your work life look in the sort of interim between the two so um, after having Isaac on maternity leave, I retrained as, um, as a bookkeeper. Um, I wanted to do something that I was going to be able to work at home and work quite flexibly, flexibly around. And it was also, I've always been fairly um, sort of organised and sort of back office things that I did in, in a lot of my previous roles. Uh, in, in the other jobs I've done since graduating, I've always really enjoyed the sort of spreadsheety things, obviously everyone's <laughs> dream. Um, so bookkeeping seemed like a logical um, route to follow and so I retrained whilst on maternity leave and then took on my first client um, when Isaac was about nine months old. So he was still quite young and a lot of my antenatal group friends were still um, you know, we're still on maternity leave, so I was the first one back, uh, which was a bit difficult, but I was leaving him with my mum, so it wasn't quite as sort of distressing, I suppose, for either of us as, as sort of dropping off at nursery or anything. Um, and so I just did that, and I tried to do as much as I could from home with the bookkeeping, and um, the rest of it was um, all right, and he would go to my mum's. When he was about 18 months old, I found a childminder, because my work was picking up and I was working about four days a week. There was a bit, you know, I couldn't expect my mum to have him all of that time. So he was going to a childminders for two days and then to my mum's for two days. And then eventually I got um, sort of found on LinkedIn by a company who were looking to hire um, a finance manager really um, and give them a bit more insight into the, the sort of runnings of their business. And so I went and joined them and they, I, was started, I started off working for them three days a week and eventually they wanted me on full time. And they offered me a very good um, employment package and it was sort of too good to turn down, I suppose. So um, I accepted the salaried position, gave up all but one of, well, all but two of my self-employed clients actually, and ended up 
in employment um, with Isaac going to a childminder's two, three days a week, eight till six, and at my mum's two days a week, eight till six, which took its toll eventually. Um, you know, uh, it was it was very stressful. I got the worst parts of the day with him really, and I never really felt that I had that much quality time with him. My husband was working shifts, and so we didn't see each other very much. Um, and so when I found out I was pregnant um, with Eden, I decided that it was a good opportunity for me to leave that job and set up my own business and enable me to have a little bit more flexibility. So that's the next stage. <laughs> yeah, so how does it, how do things look now? Because a two can completely change the picture. And I've, I've said throughout this series, this, this isn't necessarily people that are just coming to the end of maternity leave. This might be people have had a second or a third, or it might be that their partner's career path has changed. Maybe they've had a pay rise or been made redundant and they're sort of considering that change again. It's kind of the second one brings a whole new world of, of excitement with them. <laughs> so where, where has that new world of excitement led you? Well, um, so yeah, so I decided to have um, because I was going to have two children in, well, sort of uh, not in school, um, there was just no way that I could feasibly afford childcare for two children. So that was one of the biggest drivers. Um, and the, Isaac started going to nursery, but he only went um, a few afternoons a week, and that enabled me to have a little bit of time with Eden. And obviously, he was a newborn. I mean, I, I started, I set up my business, I was actually back working just two weeks after he was born. Uh, but it was only a, a couple of hours a week, so it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. But he did very much grow up um, with looking at me and my side profile, with me on my computer, and he sat on a mat with his toys <laughs> around him. And my children are very different, and I'm not, I mean, it could be any, any number of things, but to me, a lot of it is the fact that he was basically involved for, for about six months. But you know, he needs sort of, <laughs> he's, he's very good at uh, playing on his own now and you know both of my kids are actually quite good at entertaining themselves so uh, you know there's, there's a positive to it it's, it's a bit of mum guilt there I suppose um, but really it just enabled me to not really I just I, I remember those days of picking Isaac up from the childminders and, and him just screaming the whole way home because he was also so tired and I'd had a really long stressful day at work and I was tired and I just thought I can't, I can't keep doing this for you know with two children. It just it wasn't sustainable for me. Um, and and I had the option. I'm, I'm fortunate that I do a job that is relatively straightforward to set up in my own business and easy to run from home and easy to run around and around family. So um, it's 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 worked out well. Um, and it just, it's enabled me to do some school runs. Um, it's enabled me to take time off with the kids when I've needed to. Um, and having two kids, I don't know if it would have been much different really if I'd set up this business after the first child or, or not. But um, I think I know that I'm not having any more children. Um, and so it's been quite good for me to be able to sort of go all in on this business as much as I can with two children. Um, but it has meant that I can drive it um, as much as I want to. If that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely. I think the uh, it's something I'm very passionate about, and and people that have been been following me for a while will have probably seen it crop up once or twice about this begin with the end in mind. And I feel like it, in schools, it really is lacking unless there's something, a subject you love or a career you've really got your teeth into that you really fancy pursuing you're kind of left flailing a little bit. It's like, well, you've got to stay in education or you've got to do something, pick something. And this begin with the end in mind. And I, at 15, had no idea what I wanted to do work-wise, but the one thing I wanted to be was a mum. Um, the irony was that at nearly 17, I was told I couldn't have kids, but that's another story. Um, but at 15, no idea for career, but I knew I wanted to be a mum. And no one sat me down and went, well, you need to consider there are certain industries that are going to be better and certain industries that are not going to work for those kind of things. Like, 
try maybe maybe consider these factors and you could cut down sort of your options moving forward because there are some people that are in careers that can't be done at home or can't be done with reduced hours and they've spent years qualifying in these things to go actually I now I don't I want the motherhood more yeah so I'm not willing to sacrifice the motherhood but I've spent all this time doing this one thing and now I can't continue it like it, it, it's crazy that they're not teaching this begin with the end in mind at school level yeah. like how much of a difference would that have made to our lives in general um there's at least two careers that i've been on that i wouldn't have done if someone had sat me down and done that <laughs> well no i mean i i worked for a couple of years as a as a bar manager so you know there wasn't and actually that was that was part of it is actually you know my husband was a bar manager when we had our kids and actually only up until recently and you know he, he can't do that from home so uh, yeah. <laughs> it was it was always going to have to be me um who, who took that time off despite the fact that you know he's he's actually the one that wants to be the sort of the stay-at-home parent i suppose um, i mean neither of us are stay-at-home parents but um obviously i'm being around i'm sort of the one end who ends up doing more of those things um, i prefer to be working <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> nowadays not not full-time i like having a choice i, I do like a choice but um you know, he's always said, yeah, you, you drive your business and then I could be a stay-at-home dad and play golf all day. <laughs> so, so what for you has been the sort of biggest bonuses behind taking this path or some, some the, say the I, biggest or a couple of biggest? Yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 uh, it's not, it's not all sunshine and roses in my, in my business or, you know, with running a business, I think, but I think really for me, the most immediate uh, benefits were no childcare costs um, and the, really the flexibility to take time off when I want to. Um, I mean, I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a minute, but um, you know, it has meant that if my kids are off sick, I can be at home with them. I don't have to worry about the fact that I can't go into work or that I, you know, my kids have been sick regularly and they're going to get annoyed with me because my kids are always sick or you know even just down to going into school and doing a bit of reading um i i made sure when my son started school that um as much as my business was taking off and i was really busy there was no point in me running my business if i wasn't able to actually go in and help at school a little bit i mean i, I, I i'm not i'm not on the pta um, I, don't, I don't have enough time for it but I did make sure that once a month I went in and I listened to kids read for two hours and you know that was a massive benefit to the teacher um, and so that was that was my my sort of offering um, but also just being able to well you know do, just just do those things just have have the freedom to, to make choices when I wanted to um, and yeah take time off without feeling guilty that other people are looking at me thinking oh she's she's off again <laughs> um which I, I i never had before but i do remember um before i had eden and i um i can't remember what had happened but something happened with the childcare, and i ended up having to bring isaac into my office for the day <laughs> um which thankfully they were fine with but um, obviously yeah. it wasn't ideal uh, and i think i just stuck him on my computer with cbb's for a couple of hours and, and let him run by it for a couple more <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was taken in, I was apparently six months when my mum took me into her work. She did have her own business, but she had a shop um, not too far away from where we both are in Weybridge. And it was so rare for a mum to start a business. She'd started it with a friend. I never met this friend because she, my mum was running it by herself by the time I was old enough to register what was going on. But she started this business with a friend and it was so rare for the, maybe it was particularly the area, for mums to have businesses that it made the paper. Oh, really? <laughs> mums had started a business. You think the papers would be full of that if they had this now. I'm, oh. I'm sure I've got the clipping somewhere and it was about, yeah, two mums start a business. Ooh, how exciting! Nowadays, nowadays it's not quite nowadays. so rare. <laughs> yeah, but it was—I was six, yeah, six months old. My mum took me into work because that was it. I mean, it's her shop; she could do what she wanted. Yeah, I remember my parents owned a restaurant when I was a child, so I remember 
um, going around handing out baskets of bread to the customers. It was back in the day when we used to hand out baskets of bread when people arrived. So we sat down at a table. My brother and I used to go around the restaurant handing them out to customers, and they loved us. Ah. One of my earliest memories. So uh, yeah, I think it was quite normal and quite acceptable then. No, it's just, nowadays, I don't know. Maybe it's just my job. Um, well, I, I, no, nobody would mind um, if I have my. I mean, I'm frequently because I'm. I, you know, I'm in my office down in the garden. Quite frequently, my kids will just tear down here while I'm on the phone to somebody and uh, say something totally inappropriate. Um, <laughs> but you know, most of my clients, well, in fact, all of my clients know my setup. So, yeah. <laughs> thankfully, um, they fairly understand. I've tried to do some filming when she's, and now she's mobile and she's pulling the tripod over and I'm like, that's a lot of equipment attached to that tripod. Please don't throw it on the floor. Um, and I've now learned to not film when she's, we, we, we turned a corner and the filming can't happen anymore with her up. <laughs> it was very cute in the early days. <laughs> So, so what has been the sort of downside? Because like you said, it's not it's not all roses and it's, I mean, I know very much it's hard work, but um, what's been the sort of downside from the mum side of things? I think really the downside is that it's, I found it, I have found it very difficult to switch off in the past. I'm better at it now because, um, well, actually after about a year of running my business, I realised that something needed to, to go because I was facing burnout and you know it, it, thankfully I, I found people at the right time who offered me advice um, and I've, all, I've always referred back to them as my sort of shining light because who knows what you know where I would have ended up if I hadn't happened to be at a meeting a networking meeting uh, when I met these people um, but it has been incredibly stressful um, I find it very difficult sometimes to uh, not sort of be on my phone all the time and actually be entirely present with my children and it's something that I'm trying to um, improve on but also I've had to kind of accept that um, well I've, I've chosen to accept I've, I've also been told I need to talk more positively to myself so I've chosen to accept the fact that it's not always possible to be off my phone and when my kids are around you know there's there's, there's not um, and also I need time to switch off and sometimes you know if I've been at home all day and then I've you know sort of been working really focused and then had to go in front of you go and pick the kids up and then come back to actually then sit down and be a hundred percent with them and present with them is it's not always realistic you know sometimes I just need a bit of peace and quiet and have a cup of tea um, and also I don't think I've ever had a true 100% time off holiday since I started my own business, which isn't a problem. Um, it's, you know, I've, I, I know that it just it is the way it is, but um, we went camping in Wales this summer and uh, for two evenings of that week that we were away, I was sitting in a tent in the middle of a field, in the middle of nowhere in Wales on my laptop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> connect my phone internet and it was insane but um you know it was actually quite nice that I was able to take my business my work and not feel stressed about the fact that anything could be happening um but you know one day it'd be nice to actually just go away for a week and, and not have to worry about it but. yeah no the switching off I very much get that we've had um a long two sort of Monday to Friday bank holiday weekends away both of which I worked a lot of um, a, a camping one which I worked less, I managed to not take my laptop for that one. Um, I was panicking because I was camping on my own with a toddler enough without taking the laptop. But I did do a fair bit of work on my phone sort of when she had lunch naps and things. And that worked quite well. And then yeah, we're off for a week. And everyone's like, oh, it must be nice to go off for a week's holiday. And I was like, well, I've still got a load of work to do. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're both um, taking laptops because we're both self-employed in this house, so we're both be taking our laptops and designating a little bit of time each day to go and do a bit of work. But yeah, like you said, it's, it's the nature of the beast, and actually, the benefits, as long as the benefits can continue to outweigh the negatives, then you're fine. Exactly, and I think you know, I have managed to set up a business, and I have managed to go away. You know, it's not like I've not had a holiday in the last three and a half years. Um, there have been some sort of quite hairy moments where, you know, yeah, we went we went to Sicily a couple of 
a couple of years ago and, and I didn't take a laptop and I only had my phone and I didn't have any Wi-Fi and I was trying I was on the phone to somebody <laughs> trying to explain how to do payroll. Um, so you know it was just it was I was just I was sitting in this sort of random village square because it's the only place I could get phone reception. Um, and you know it was it was really stressful. <laughs> um, but you know that was an amazing holiday as well. Uh, but yeah I think really the downside the biggest downside is just not ever being able to 100 percent switch off from, from work and it's always it's always there and there have been times when it's really you know something's you know anything it could be it's very stressful and that kind of filters into how I am with my family you know if I'm stressed about something in work then I end up quite frequently take out my stress on on them yeah. um, or you know I won't be able to sleep properly I, that that rarely happens I normally let go of it by the time I go to bed but um, yeah that's it really um, yeah, no, def definitely something we, we struggle with at, the, at this end as well, but we're both consciously working on it. My phone goes <laughs> yeah. to bed in a separate room. My phone goes to bed uh, at 9.30, 10, and I'll give myself a half hour awake time without the phone. The phone goes to bed in the office. <laughs> it <means. laughs> I've had to download an app that actually shuts down my phone. Um, ah. And it, it means that people can still call me, certain people can call me. So I've got my mum and my husband, they can both call me in an emergency. Well, they can call me and it will come through to my phone. Yeah. Um, but other than that, if, every time I try and click on an app, um, it comes up with like a really scary monster face. <laughs> Go, ah. no, you don't do this. Um, so that's, it's quite handy. Um, and it just means that's that brilliant. I can, yeah, an hour screen free time before, before bedtime. Ah. See, I have mine, I have auto hours set up for putting mine into onto sleep mode or out of office mode, whatever it is. So if someone phones me three times in a row, they'll get through and that classifies my phone goes, oh, this must be an emergency and it'll get through. But other than that, I don't get them. And that runs till, I think, 10.30 in the morning. So I have to consciously choose to open up. The, the messages will still be there and things if I pick my phone up, but there will be no alerts or anything like that, apart from my alarm clock um, during that time, which is, it's funny how productive you are when your phone's quiet. <laughs> yes, I know. It is those, I, I actually, I've taken off all notifications off Facebook on my phone and my emails actually no longer sync automatically on my phone I have to choose to go into my emails and manually refresh them so basically decided that when I'm at my computer and I'm working then I will you know I can choose to look at my emails when I want to and actually the rest of the time if something's desperately urgent somebody can call me and then I can choose whether to take it or not. <laughs> so, I know about yeah. that on the emails and I haven't been brave enough to take the plunge yet but hopefully I will eventually. <laughs> We'll get there. Um, so, when do you see things changing over the next five years? Have you got sort of five year goals as the kids are getting older and things? It's, yeah, I mean, they're still quite young. I'd say so in five years' time, Isaac will be 12, he'll be starting at secondary school, and then there's all those other kinds of challenges, I suppose. Eden will be eight and a half, um, junior school. So, I think um, as far as parenthood and children go you know as lot alongside running a business um i don't think anything really necessarily will change um i would like to think that my business is able to provide me with enough money that i can take actually take that time off being off and actually take them on you know i I've, my husband and i have said since the kids were small that when they're a bit older we would like to be, to be able to take them on sort of what we call life experience holidays you know ones that are going to you know really stick with them and, and make them you know amazed uh, whereas we've not really wanted to spend that money when they're younger because I, I was taken to Australia when I was seven and actually I don't really remember very much of it um, yeah. we were there for a month and I just think <laughs> well if my mum had spent the money when I was like 12 or 13 and it would have been you know an amazing experience I would probably still remember so you know there's, there's lots of things that I'd like to be able to do with the kids you know and obviously they get six weeks summer holiday so it'd be nice to be able to take them away for that length of time um, and, and sort of show them, show them the world 
Um, but other than that, everything else is probably going to be ticking along the same way. I'd like to think that my business has grown to a bit more of a point that, um, I mean, I've, I do I do have a team who work with me, so it's not all on me at the moment anyway, but it would be nice that I can actually take more of a step back um, and kind of oversee everything um, rather than be tied to the daily grind. <laughs> <laughs> and is, is that the sort of same sort of 10 years time? Are you looking, got any other ideas for, for that sort well, of next step? I think as the kids get older, um, it's more, you know, they'll they'll need us less. So it'll be more about my husband and I sort of finding that time to be together, finding new hobbies, pursuing new hobbies, um, doing some crazy, I don't know, traveling. Or I, what I would really like to do is also do some voluntary work. I've always been a bit of a, a helper um, in that respect, and. Um, I would eventually, I mean, not in 10 years, because my kids will still will still need me. Um, but, you know, long term, I would like to be able to leave my business and, and go and work for months um, months at a time abroad um, for, you know, charitable causes and things. Um, but, you know, it, it all depends. If, if, if my business is doing well enough that my husband can either retire early or work part time or take regular sabbaticals. Um, <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going off on my own. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the kids don't want to come with you when they're a bit older. Yes, well, maybe. I like to think that they would, but in reality, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I've got, I've got a charity cycle ride my mum did uh, just before her diagnosis with cancer. I think the doctor knew before and he kind of said, look, this isn't this diagnosis won't change. Go on your trip. I won't put it on your form yet. Um, so she was still allowed to go. But I want to take my daughter on that trip one day, but she um, oh, has only just mastered walking yet. So the cycling's a bit of a whale. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm kind of, I'm ever hopeful she'll want to do that with mummy one day. Oh, <laughs> so I'm sure Granny did this, let's do it again. <laughs> bit of emotional oh. blackmail in there, it's fine. Well, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to think that my, you know, I, I, I've always been, as I said, I've always been quite a sort of charitable, caring, giving person. And I, I'd like to think that I pass that on to my boys. Um, but, you know, if I have them, then so be it. But maybe they can come and help me, I don't know, build a school somewhere. <laughs> Use the threat well. of the UCAS form. That, always, that worked for a lot of, I was involved with Charities Commission at school and suddenly UCAS form got dangled in front of everyone and lots of other people started joining and lots of other people started volunteering to help with charity events and I was like is this something to do with UCAS by any chance and um, so if you're not if you're watching outside of the UK that's the sort of form you have to do for university that I never got around to doing because I never got around to university um I, I did university of life but it was a very <laughs> important thing at my school because it was a very academic serious school yeah. and it suddenly inspired the charitable heart in lots of students <laughs> well yeah I don't know I don't know where I got mine from I, I'm I went I went to school again it was very academic we had our, our 10 year reunion obviously a while back and um, it was really interesting to see the direction that everyone had gone in. There were a lot of doctors and lawyers, um, and then there were a lot of entrepreneurs. But then the other sort of main bulk were people who had chosen to go and work for sort of NGOs and charitable organisations and things. So I do wonder whether the school has somehow instilled something in me. Yeah. My parents as well, to an extent. Mm. I, don't know, I don't want to say that they're not charitable. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I, I think, um, yeah, I think, I think, I don't know. Um, yeah. in there, part of your core. Uh, so what would be your top tip for so sort of other mums looking at this going, yeah, actually that, that would provide me with the lifestyle that I want with regards to flexible work and things like that. What was your sort of top tip when you're looking at starting a business? I would say, I mean, there's, there's so many things that I would, I would recommend you, you think about, but really the biggest one for me, and I think I wouldn't have actually considered it when I started out, but on reflection in the last three years, I don't think I could have done it without having the full support of my husband. And I think it's really, really crucial um, before going into making any choice really about what work you want to do after having children is, you know, 
is making sure that you're all on the same page because um, whatever you end up doing, if there are hurdles along the way and there's any resentment over the choices that you've made and you, your partner hasn't been fully on board with that, then I think it can cause quite a lot of problems. Uh, and, you know, certainly as, as a business owner running a business, you know, there are many sort of ups and downs um, financially, uh, just general sort of management and stress and, you know, growing the business and all of that. Um, and it's been very reassuring knowing that he fully understands and believes in what I'm doing. Um, and he's known it even when we've faced sort of financial hardship um, or when, you know, I've sort of gone, oh, what am I doing all of this for? He's gone around, you know, he's actually turned around and said, well, no, I believe in you and, you know, you can do this and, you know, we'll just keep going. Um, whereas, and, I, and I, I think that it can often be, you know, the, the reason that relationships end um, is when there's any sort of resentment over money. Um, I think money is quite a big driver and well, money makes the world go round. Um, but I, I do think that that's really, really important that um, you know, you've know you actually sat down and made those decisions together. Oh, amazing. Well, thank you so much for like taking the time out of your busy life to speak to us. I really, really do appreciate it. How is it best for people to, to stalk you online, get in touch with you and things? Yeah, um, well, I am, I'm on Facebook um, under Seed Accounting Solutions and on Instagram as well under just Seed Accounting. Um, I'm, I'm one of very few accountants that are on Instagram, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I find something to post about. Um, and um, I've also got a website um, and, and you can sign up to my newsletter and we've also got a really helpful blog which isn't sort of too long and boring and lengthy um, but uh, yeah, if you, you can go on to that it's uh, seedaccounting.solutions it's no .com or .co.uk it's just seedaccounting.solutions I'll link that all down below so guys you'll be able to find everything down below and the link to the newsletter and everything will be down below the joy of the description box so wherever you found this video online everything will be down here somewhere um, also all the contact details and things for me as well so if you've got any questions for either me or Tamsin about setting up your own business or how we found the experience of it then do ping me an email jump on the website etc and the link for all the other videos in this series on work life will be down there too I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood and remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be Cheers guys. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.